Vegas to Japan, different hemisphere hotties from Greece to Thailand. Being on safari in the motherland. A rice in Indochina with a crew of Asian fans. I told you, keep the block cause the world is mine. Hit the currency exchange, it's Euro time. Monte Carlo Casino, spend the dime. Fast cars to Autobahn, Berlin is mine. Catch me in Paris, but not in the Hilton. Five-star hotels, six-star pimp, and now I'm in Brazil and I'm bicycle dip. South American Queens, big boss living. Different places, brand new spaces, got more locations than military bases. I've been caught my dreams, so ain't no more chase. Stamp my passport, next destination. Here we go, we taking this city. Here we go, we taking this city. Here we go, we taking this city. The next stop, the whole you ever meet a girl, she tells you she buying you like, oh yeah, it's about to go down. Just to find out the chick really bipolar. You've been injured by no fault of your own, done dirty, or arrested? OkiLawOffice.com, 505-433-4953. We're here for you, New Mexico. Albuquerque police are, of course, prepared for more protests tonight. As we hear, there could be more. Here's News 13's Chris McKee. Yeah, the mayor called last night, quote, scary for everyone, but he also indicated that APD's response was appropriate. I do know that uh, they, inter they intervened as soon as they could in a safe way that would not lead to serious injury. And so by that measure, because there was no serious injury, I am absolutely grateful. As Jeannie mentioned earlier, APD started the night helping block traffic, actually, by running crowd control for the peaceful protest on Central. Images here. But once the vandalism and problem started around midnight, APD sent out groups of riot officers with wooden batons, all forming lines to push people back. Here you can also see video of officers tossing smoke grenades into the street. Officers did also end up using tear gas at some point throughout the evening to try to break the crowd up. Now the city says it's ready for similar protests to continue for several more days, possibly having seen that pattern in other major U.S. cities. But when asked if he was ready to call in the National Guard or impose a curfew, here's what Mayor Tim Keller said. We don't want to do that. We need Albuquerque's help. Uh, we are not going to do that today. And we believe that with the help of peaceful uh, protesters and the work of our law enforcement folks, that that's unnecessary at this time. Now, despite that, saying it is unnecessary at this time, the mayor did say that he is willing to call up the National Guard or impose a curfew if needed. APD also said today it will be looking into closing off roads like Central to cars more quickly if violent protests reemerge. The state level, Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham also said that the state is ready to offer help if cities need it. Back to you. Okay, thank you. What it don't do it is your boy LB Johnson. This is Shut Up and Talk TV live, man. Uh, on location, we're in Old Town, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Man, I love this place. It's so beautiful. Uh, I'm out here with a, with a hometown legend, a uh, good friend of mine. I ain't seen him in a long time. Demacio Page, how you feeling, brother? I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing good. Just Welcome to Shut Up and Talk. Uh, uh, we have a lot to talk about, a lot going on, but I want to start off by by asking you with the you know the pandemic going on. It literally stopped America. Uh, everybody kind of had to change and transition and, and you know, figure out how to cope and, and deal with life. Uh, for you, how's that been? You know what? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Most part, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm lucky. Uh, uh, I'm a general contractor. <coughs> I'm a contracting company, so mm -hmm. I'm an essential worker. Okay. Yeah, so nice. uh, I'm not locked up at home like everybody else. Uh, I'm the guy who goes to your house and fix everything. Sweet. So Sweet. I, I've been busy. Uh, I've been blessed. I, you know, um, I'm not really struggling. Yeah. You know, but I feel for all the other families that are out there. I don't. I don't know how it is because I'm not struggling. I can't say, "Hey, gotcha. I know how he feels because yeah, yeah. this or that, or that." I don't know how he feels because I'm doing good. Sweet. You know what I'm saying? So I can't answer that. But I, I pray for the families that are out there that are having problems, people that are, that are not doing good and, and are struggling to make the bills. You know, because yeah. you know, like I said, I, I'm lucky. I'm blessed, and and I have a job that that's still paying. I think for a lot of people, if you you know, depending where you're at in life, 
folks have saving accounts, folks, you know, you're stacking money, whether it's a vacation fund, uh, kids' school, college, things like that. So there's, there are some people, depending where you're at in life again, already have money saved up. But yeah. for a lot of us, a lot of, you know, day-to-day -day people that work that nine to five, work paycheck to paycheck, that wasn't a possibility. So I think that's what really hit a lot of people, because they weren't, you, we didn't expect this. Nobody thought in a million years, we've heard about it in the 60s, mm -hmm. or 1960s, like 1900s. Well, that, that's huge, that's huge, because it did happen in, in 1918, the Spanish yeah, flu. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it happened, uh, World War uh, One had just ended in 1916. Yeah. And so it was huge, though, but you know what? I honestly think it, it's a big old political view uh, of, of, of blowing it out of proportion to a point. Mm. I'm not saying it's not there. Yeah. It is there. But how do we deal with it? Do we don't, right. you know, it's like saying uh, we lock something up and it's bad. Well, guess what? When you let that thing out, it's going to be worse. Exactly. So you got to let it go. You know, you got to let it run its course to a point. Uh, you know, the Spanish flu in 1918 happened. Well, the media started blowing it up, blowing it up, blowing it up. While the president and other people at that time said, hey, you know what? Let's talk better about it. Uh -huh. Within three, four months, Spanish flu's gone. They got whatever happened, yeah. and, and, it, and it cured itself. So with that Pretty being much. said, how well, how have you kind of taken to the first idea was, and as you see, we're all on, on right now, no mask on. Uh, we shook hands when we came in. What was your take on, you know, when they're saying everybody's got a mask, uh, stay, in, stay indoors, six feet distancing, all these different uh, things. Honestly, what, what was your take on all that? Uh, you know what? I, I think it's all hoopla. Uh, um, I, like I said, I believe it, it's there. Yeah. I believe it's, it's, it's a sickness. Right. I believe it happens. Mm -hmm. But who does it target? Underlying health conditions, overweight people, elderly, and, and uh, others, you know what I'm saying? Damn, I just checked like four of them boxes. You did. Like <laughs> boxes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But you know what I'm saying? But you're pretty much healthy. Yeah, you know what yeah, yeah. So Too what do we sorry. really worry about, you know? Um, the, the people we worry about when we say that is people in poverty, mm -hmm. old people, uh, people with underlying <clears throat> conditions. So, you know, those people I really think you have to really take note and take a, have a close eye on them. Yeah, yeah. You know, me, you, uh, D, we, yeah. we, we're, we're, we're yeah, pretty healthy. Relatively healthy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We get sick, we might, like, oh man. It's healthy right here, y'all. We're, we're healthy, you know? It's the house so, the luxury bills. But <laughs> like I said, it, it's like um, you have this this virus mm -hmm. and you lock it up. And then and then all of a sudden you say, all right, cool, California. I think California. Yeah. I think yeah. New York. Um, I think. He cuss and we'll bleep all that out. I'm right. sorry. <laughs> uh, I think Texas did good. Yeah. I think Utah did good. I think we did okay to the most part. I mm -hmm. think our governor's doing a little too much overboard following California's role. Yeah, yeah. So what's happening right now in California, they're having a spike because you know what? They locked everybody down. Mm -hmm. So what do you expect is gonna happen? You let people out. Yeah, everybody wilds out. Boom, yeah. it, it hits again. So you gotta let it, you, you have to have a, let the floodgates open and let stuff come out before you say, all right, cool, let's open up the whole thing and let's get it going. So with you, like you, you mentioned your business, but your profession is, you're a fighter. By yeah. trade, that's what yeah. you do. What, with, with them announcing this pandemic, with, with the governor announcing the stay-at-home order, with them shutting down basically America, what did that do for your career as far as boxing or fighting goes? You know what? I haven't fought in two years, so uh, I've been really focusing on my family. Yeah. I have two boys now. Congrats. Congrats. Uh, and, and my job. And so, uh, uh, fight, yeah, fighting is not a top priority because they don't pay me as much as I do working right now. I feel now. that. You know what I'm saying? So, and then I do stunts and movies, so that's that's exciting. So, so you staying busy? I stay busy. I stay busy. I see. Uh, no one's offered me enough money to fight again. They offered me for bare knuckle. Yeah. They're gonna pay me like 15 grand, but I was like, you know what? If I break one of these, then what? Yeah. Can't work. A wrap. What was 15 grand for? Now I can't fight again. I can't even wipe my ass correctly. I can't even write. Yeah. You know, so I. I so it's just that. not worth it. It's not even worth it. So now if you're gonna pay me 100 grand, let's talk about it. What about? I mean, because we got a lot of up and coming young fighters out there. Have you ever thought about coaching or? Yeah, hop into somebody's I, I, I coach high school wrestling. Oh, I'm a head oh, coach right. at St. Pius, so I, I, I coach the rich kids. I'm, I'm, again, I'm not mad at that. Very <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little different. Yeah. So with that sports related, when do you think is the right time to reopen sporting events and have crowds and I, I think have people able to... I think it's okay right now. I honestly think, like I said, I don't play into that, you know? I, I think we need to open up America to, to, to a point. I think sports needs to go because you know what? And every every bad place in, in the in America, who saved us? Yeah, yeah. Boxing, sports Muhammad Ali. Sports is definitely Ali's, the great unifier. Sports is the God, the God savior of everybody. Come on, man. Because it gives everybody hope. Yeah, yeah. You need sports. It gives people hope. Sports unifies people in a way that no you don't what. see in anything else. Before we get Absolutely. out of here, last question I got to ask you. Right now, you know we're, we're, we're in it. Even with the pandemic going on, we have a bigger situation that has just kind of blown up with the uh, uh, murder, of course, of uh, First of Amon, Aubrey, and then uh, of George uh, Floyd that just passed. Right. Uh, what do you think, even you know, even as being a minority and, and growing up, in, you know, in the inner city, 
How do you think, what would be the best way for America as a whole to deal with this situation? You know what, honestly, uh, I look at it this way. You know, it, it's like saying, there's good cops and there's bad cops. Yeah, there's people of color are good, there's people of color are bad. How, how, do we, how do we weigh this out correctly, you know? Yeah. You can't just say, hey, you know what? Like, 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 uh, like I was saying earlier, you know, uh, uh, Martin Luther King said, you can't beat hate with hate because yeah. all you do is feel, feel it with more hate. Right. Yeah. The only thing that could get rid of hate is love. Exactly, exactly. So how are you going to handle this, you know? How are you, are you going to handle this of color? Are we going to go out there? Are we going to make a stand? I'm not saying be peaceful and just stand there and you know them. You know what? Make your voices yeah. heard, but don't be violent with it. Yeah. Fight intelligently. I think Fight the, intelligently. The, the biggest thing and the problem that, that some aren't doing right now, and I say some because I've heard of mm -hmm. some good things happen to this, uh, they're not making it count. Like, yep. you know, it's, it's, I, I agree we need to stand. Uh, I'm not knocking, and I've said this several times on my different social media pages, I'm not knocking the people that are riding, that are even deciding to loot. To me, they're, they're purposely trying to get attention. They're not making, they're not trying to make a point right now. The, they're just mad, they're upset, and now it's like, you didn't listen to us, you didn't pay attention to us when we were kneeling peacefully, when we were protesting peacefully, now we're gonna give you something to talk to, about. But to a point, I look at this, what were you taught as a child? Now. Okay. Yeah. How, how were you taught to handle a situation like this? Yeah. Yeah. So some of us that grew up in the hood, you know what? Mom could say, hey, you get your ass kicked, don't come home. Yeah. Yeah. Or you fight back. You're right? whooped again. Or you fight back. Yeah. back. But we're older now, we have to learn. So what are these people being taught when you're at home? Hey, you, you, you know what? Someone's bad to you, you, you treat with violence. And so yeah. all these people that grew up in the hood, what's your mentality? Yeah. While you're coming at me, now I need to come at you violently. I feel that, I feel that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. how are we teaching our, our youth? How are we, how are we gonna come across right. with our youth? How are we gonna teach them how to be better? Because if we don't, it's always gonna wow. be that way. That, you I think, think of I that, think, that no, you, just, you just hit the nail right there because honestly, at the end of the day, uh, like I said, we had Spanish flu years ago. This is our World War you know, one. This is mm -hmm. our Spanish flu. And literally, what we learned from this is what our kids will talk about 20, 30, 40, 50 yes, years from absolutely. now. So and sadly, right now, Albie, how do you want your kids to handle this situation? Oh, peacefully. Oh, you know, I want you know what I'm it, saying? You, 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 you wouldn't want your kids to go out there. Because right now, they're saying, like, oh, yeah, look, we're on TikTok. We're doing this. Yeah, Let's do this. Yeah. Oh, we're going to do that. We're gonna, you know what? If I saw my boys out there doing that, I would get the little tail ass oh, back home, And I would wow. beat the crap out of them. Wow. There, there are people we're, affected that we're not talking about the small business owners who are being shut long. down yeah, and things yeah. like that. It's just, it's not fair. It's not fair. We at all. can literally talk about this all day long. We'll definitely have to continue this conversation a later date. But Demacia, let everybody know they want to get more uh, information on you. Uh, maybe they need help as far as contracting goes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let them know how to get in touch. You know, uh, Demacia Page. You know, uh, I'm really not on social media that much anymore. I noticed that you had like four pages at one point. Now you only got like one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I own le uh, legendary builders and construction and. Home remodels, AC, plumbing, all the above. Uh, if you have any information, hit me up on my phone. It's gonna be 505-615-2399. Again, 505-615-2399. If you have anything to do with your home, any home improvements, any problems you're having with the roof or anything else, give me a call. We'll try to get you a good price and uh, get your home fixed up correctly so you're living it right. That's right. big, my son, thanks. It was good uh, catching up with you. Appreciate you, appreciate you coming on, man. Oh, thank you, appreciate it. All right, we'll be back after this. Now open, New Mexico's premier sports bar, Stadium 66. Cheer for your favorite teams on the largest state-of-the-art TV screens. Tackle the amazing appetizers, and then take on the rest of the menu. Now, for the first time ever, watch your team, bet your team. Stadium 66, your place for beer, bites, and bets. Located in the Route 66 Casino Hotel, I-40, exit 140. Lava Rock Brewing Company, conveniently located on Albuquerque's west side, just south of I-40. You can come on in, enjoy our pizza, pasta, burgers, and more by Matucci's. It's all at Lava Rock. Lava Rock Brewing Company, come on in.
School Union 412. Find a career with benefits, not just a job, at UA Local 412 Training Center. We are looking for plumbers, pipe fitters, welders, and HVAC tech apprentices and journeymen. Call 505-256-9257. Local Union 412. Are you looking to develop your skills this season? Coach Carl Barrer and the Air Barrer program at 8 Grady Sports Performance Center provides comprehensive position training for aspiring football players at all levels. Check us out at 8gradys.com to learn more and sign up for training today. Ladies, gentlemen, did you accidentally marry a bot? You've been injured by no fault of your own, done dirty, or arrested, OkiLawOffice.com, 505-433-4953. We're here for you, New Mexico. Mr. L.B. Johnson. <laughs> How's everybody doing out here tonight? Or today? Uh, like I said, I go by the name of L.B. Johnson. I uh, was on radio for a few years out here. Power 106. Uh, shoot, I now have a show on Comcast 26, uh, Propio Networks, called Shut Up and Talk TV. Uh, I felt like it was very important for me to be a part of this. Uh, one, I gotta give big props to Josh and to Malcolm for putting this together, for standing together. Shout out to Josh, uh, I'm glad he put that t-shirt on. He, had, he was out here with his Sunday best on. Uh, looking a little awkward. Uh, this is my son, and it's weird, this wasn't planned, but this is one of my four children and three of them live in this city. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. That's why I have to speak out, because he's two years old. But I don't want to wait till he's 30 plus and see a cop's knee on his neck. I don't want to wait till he dies by the hands of injustice. I don't want to wait and still have the same laws and the same leaders saying it's okay to kill us because we're not worthy. And it, it's, it's great as it is to see everybody, all these different colors out here, and these signs that say Black Lives Matter, it's also hurtful. It's sad to me that we need signs, that we need hashtags, that we need social media. We have to protest to remind people that we matter. No matter what we've done for this great nation, no matter what we stood for, no matter how many, I, I was watching, a movie, and I had a speech, man. I, I practiced it all last night like it was my Easter speech, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I watched an old movie, and it was The Help. And I was watching how all the, 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 the white ladies in the, in the movie, you know, they were racist, but they didn't know they were racist. To them, what they were doing was okay. When the lady was complaining about black folks, the black maids, using their restroom and how she wanted to give them separate bathrooms, she thought that was okay. And to me, so many years later, we're still dealing with the same issue. A lot of people are walking around living with racism and they think it's okay. We see it every day and they say, I'm not racist. I don't think like that. I'm not, I'm not like those other people. But today, if you're not standing with us about George Floyd and Breonna and Aubrey, then you are against us. You are just like those people. Understand, this is not a black and white thing. This is a right and wrong thing. This is about injustice. This is about you standing up, no matter what color skin you have, and saying, I don't want to see any of my brothers and sisters, God's children, die by the hands of the law or each other. say this, and this is very important. Black folks, we make up 3% of the population in New, in New Mexico. Understand this, we can't do it alone. Right. We need each and every one of you out here today, and all your brothers and sisters, your moms and dads, your grandparents, to stand with us. Yeah. A lot needs to change, no question. The police need to change, no question. But I need y'all to understand something. We have to change too. We have to say no to all types of racism. We have to stop allowing it on social media, in our families, at the dinner table, when it's a joke, when we think it's okay, when no one's watching, when it's with our friends. We have to say no. 
racism stops today. I hate the rhetoric, I hate the thought that I heard somebody say. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't think it too. But I said, why does it seem that black lives only matter when one of us die? Why is the only time we're protesting and we're marching and we're ready to say we need to get rid of these good old boys is when somebody else dies? Why can't this be the new normal? Why can't every day we say, I'm not standing for racism? I need you to understand, and I'm not one to be political, but that man in Washington, sitting in that White House, is the epitome of racism. We're no better than the rest. But hear me when I say this. If you're not voting the right people in, if you're not standing with the right people, if you're not making sure that they have a place at the table, then we're, this is pointless. We might as well rip up the signs and go home. It's more than just, I remember a long time ago, when I was young, I got real mad, and I was furious with my big brother. Dog Johnson, and I was yelling, and I'm cussing, and I'm going off, and he said, yeah, yeah, get it out, go in, go in, finish, finish. And when I was done, I was huffing and puffing, I wasn't as big as I am now, you know, didn't have all this good extra sexy. Uh, but uh, I was huffing and puffing, and he said, are you done? I said, huh? He said, are you done? I said, yeah. He said, now what are you going to do about it? We can huff and puff, protest, we can riot, whatever you want to call it, all day long. But when you're done doing all that, what are you gonna do about it? Are we gonna vote the right people into power? Are we gonna demand a seat at the table? Are we gonna say no to any and every form of racism? I stand here right now and I take a pledge on behalf of my friends, my family, Shut Up and Talk TV, Three Ladies and the Queen, excuse me, Three Kings and the Queen Entertainment, and Living Water Miracle City, that's my pastor, Richard Johnson. We make a pledge today to not stand for any racism, to not stand for any injustice. I've seen the posts from, from others saying, well, what happened when, when, when this person, this Mexican person, or this white when they got killed in justice, where was the protest? If you want to fight for it, and you just want to fight with you, I'm here to support you. I'm here to ride with you. You do the work, I'll do it with you. We stand in solidarity with injustice. No to racism. If you believe that, say it. No to racism. Say it again. No to racism. No to racism. No to racism. No to racism. I'm L.B. Johnson and I love all of God's children. Mexico's premier sports bar, Stadium 66. Cheer for your favorite teams on the largest state-of-the-art TV screens. Tackle the amazing appetizers and then take on the rest of the menu. Now, for the first time ever, watch your team, bet your team. Stadium 66, your place for beer, bites, and bets. Located in the Route 66 Casino Hotel, I-40, exit 140. Lava Rock Brewing Company, conveniently located on Albuquerque's west side, just south of I-40. You can come on in, enjoy our pizza, pasta, burgers, and more by Matucci's. It's all at Lava Rock. Lava Rock Brewing Company, come on in. Find a career with benefits not 
just a job at UA Local 412 Training Center. We are looking for plumbers, pipe fitters, welders, and HVAC tech apprentices and journeymen. Call 505-256-9257. Local Union 412. Are you looking to develop your skills this season? Coach Carl Barrer and the Air Barrer program at 8 Grady Sports Performance Center provides comprehensive position training for aspiring football players at all levels. Check us out at 8gradys.com to learn more and sign up for training today. You marry the vato, but you find out his best man is mad feed man. E, that's all messed up though. You've been injured by no fault of your own? Done dirty or arrested? OkiLawOffice.com, 505-433-4953. We're here for you, New Mexico. Hey, it's your boy LB Johnson. This is Shut Up and Talk TV. We are live right now at the at the Albuquerque United. This is a, a, a peaceful rally slash protest that uh, uh, Malcolm Shelby and Josh Perez put together uh, to unite uh, uh, the brown community with the black community and just show our solidarity, really, man. I was blessed to meet this brother, man. He's actually, you actually represent the Black Lives Matter organization. Uh, let us know, introduce yourself your official title. Uh, I'm Frankie Grady. I'm one of the uh, official organizers of Black Lives Matter Albuquerque. Um, we have two branches currently out here, uh, me and two other sisters, and then Miss Celinda and Brother Arthur and a few other people, uh, but I, I represent one, one chapter. Now I notice out here there's been a lot of confusion, especially when it comes to people announcing these protests as far as what is in a quote unquote official Black Lives Matter protest as opposed to other ones. Now I know Arthur, I know Celinda, who are the other sisters that you're working with? Okay, so it's, it's Sister Nikki, uh, and, and if you go to my page yeah, yeah. at Frankie Grady uh, at Facebook, uh, of course they're my friends and you'll, you'll see them coming. Oh, Nikki Archuleta and right. Uh, Nikia uh, Russell, Russell, I believe. Russ. Yes, Russ. Right, okay. Yeah, as those two sisters. Sweet, sweet. Uh, okay. Yeah, and uh, as you know, they've been active in the community for, for years. Uh, and I just recently joined forces where I came from New York. Yeah. Uh, I was already a, a member of Black Lives Matter. So I just brought that same energy to Albuquerque. Love it. We, we appreciate it. We love having you out here. I want to ask you, one of the things that I've noticed is some of the protests, uh, we see, you know, Black Lives Matter very prevalent. And we were talking outside, off uh, air, and you would tell me how one of the issues you, you're having is some people are hashtagging events as Black Lives Matter events, but they're not. Right. Uh, so what we're trying to do, uh, for, for you people out there that have gone to these protests and, and help support us. Um, when you get there, people are confused as to whether we put it on or someone else put it on uh, because they're hashtagging Black Lives Matter. Yeah, yeah. What we're asking these organizations and these rallies and things like that is to please put in support of Ooh, okay. on, their, support on, on their flyers uh, so as to not confuse people gotcha. uh, whether it's an official Black Lives Matter uh, protest or not. I want to really point out, uh, especially at this event, and we didn't record it, I didn't, I'm not going to show it, but even while we were having this event, somebody randomly let off a M80, M90, M100, whatever. It sounded like a bomb. Two big explosions almost. If possible, it could have definitely distracted folks uh, uh, from it. And we've heard about the, the, the uh, you hear these stories of possibly them sending out people to distract these right. peaceful gatherings and these peaceful protests and then we actually see it live and in color yes sir what how do you feel about that what do you think about that well uh as you know we've been protesting for several days now um we've had uh we've had infiltrators as, as we call them um and if you look at some of the videos that we posted online you can see where we've actually engaged with those uh brothers and sisters that came in and tried to infiltrate uh, our peaceful protests um you know i, I do have to uh i do have to say the protesters themselves has been have been policing the protest. Yeah, yeah. And we don't tolerate none of that nonsense. The crowd out here did a great job. Yeah. As you said, somebody let off a firework. It was immediately taken care of uh, because we don't want any any violence associated with Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Because we know that that's the narrative that some officials are waiting for. Waiting, waiting to get the opportunity to say, "I told you." I want to be very clear what he just said. They don't want any violence associated with Black Lives Matter. That is not what Black Lives Matter stands for or is about. Yes, sir. In, 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 in closing, I thank you and I'm so blessed to have this opportunity. I want to make it official that Shut Up and Talk TV, myself and our, everybody and my team, we stand with Black Lives Matter. We stand with you, brother. Anything thank you got you, going on, calling us, we'll be there. I will. Thank you, brother. Appreciate I you. I appreciate it. Most definitely.